Hello, everybody, and welcome to Google Educator Group's Asia Pacific GEG APAC Weekend Live 2020. Uh, actually, it's the second one we've had. Uh, we, we had one in April and one in December last year. This is the third one we've done. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. We've got an army of presenters from India all the way to Japan, and I am Nate, and I'm based in Japan. And I'm really happy to be here. So I, uh, I'm going to be here to introduce uh, Google Geo Tools, but we're going to focus on Google Earth projects today. Uh, so essentially, uh, I'm just going to share my screen. I'm going to go through my deck with you. And I'm, I'm, uh, if you look into the comments on YouTube, you're going to notice that I've put a link to the slides deck that you're going to see me share. And that's got links and resources for you, as well as another link to a Google Doc that you can use as I show you how uh, you can efficiently and quickly create um, uh, a Google Earth project. And I'll tell you, Google Earth Projects is a very user-friendly tool. Um, if, if kids can type, they can use it. So we're looking at you know kids in grade three, um, maybe younger, you know, perhaps. Uh, can can create content and that kind of thing. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen with you and uh, jump into the slide deck, give a little bit of background, and show you a few things that you can do with Google Earth projects. So let me just uh, get rolling here. OK, so welcome to the session, Bring the World to Your Classroom. And we are looking at storytelling with Google Earth projects. I will mention a couple of other tools, uh, such as Google My Maps. Uh, unfortunately, Google VR Tour Creator is going to be deprecated in July 2021, so we won't touch on that because it's going to go away. Uh, even if you make your, uh, you know, make a project with Google VR Tour Creator, uh, you will still be able to keep the content. But uh, but we'll we'll focus on what uh, where you know is going to be here for a while. So bring the world to your classroom. Storytelling with Google Earth Projects. Uh, I'd also like to point out first that uh, this uh, event, three days, Friday to Sunday uh, from tonight, uh, we've got at least 130 to 150 presentations in 12 different languages all across the Asia Pacific region. Uh, you, can, uh, you can get in touch with the Google Educator Group by going to sites.google.com slash view slash GEG Asia. Or if you're like me, you can be lazy and just Google GEG Asia Pacific Connect. Um, so uh, yeah, reach out, join a community, and uh, and share what you know with uh, with us at our events. So a little bit about myself. My name is Nate Gildart. I am based in Nagoya, Japan. I've been here for about 24 years in the country, not just Nagoya, but uh, I am a social studies teacher, essentially. I teach uh, history at the DP level and individuals and societies, which is uh, kind of the middle years program version of uh, social studies. Uh, I'm a Google for Education trainer, an innovator coach, a Google Earth education expert, which is kind of why I'm doing this Google Earth thing with you right now. Uh, I'm YouTube certified, and I've got a few other certifications as well. So educational technology is something that I've been into for a very, very long time, and I love that I can apply it to my teaching context as well. And I hope you see today uh, how you can do that for yourself too. Uh, so get in touch with me. On Twitter, I am at Nathan Gildart. Um, I do have a blog that uh, I have paid little attention to in the last few months, unfortunately, called Learning Light Bulbs. But uh, socialstudiessamurai.com is where most of my resources are going these days. So reach out to me at, at Nathan Gildart or at Social Studies Samurai or uh, socialstudiessamurai.com. So first, we're going to get into Google Earth Projects. Now, Google Earth Projects is a content creation tool. Uh, students can create content. Teachers can create content. Uh, for classroom activities, and yes, you can share these with the world, and yes, you can collaborate. So uh, you could have any number of students working on one project at the same time, um, you know, showing their learning. So it could be a very collaborative tool uh, as well. Um, and we're going to show you some examples. Uh, so essentially today, what are you going to do? You're going to understand the idea of storytelling in a digital format, and in particular using Google Geo tools, and in this case, Google Earth projects, but we'll mention a few a little bit later. Um, this is going to be kind of a hands-on session. Uh, it's going to be recorded and kept on YouTube, so you will be able to kind of come back, uh, have a look at it, uh, you know, kind of go through at your own pace. Um, but I will try to give a little bit of time for people to get, kind of play with um, uh, play with the tool with a document that I've created for you, so you don't have to make anything other than the the, the project itself. Um, and we will talk about briefly other Google Earth features. 
Um, so let's look at some example projects. So if you go to this slide um, and you click on the links, you'll be able to look at a few projects that I put together. Uh, the Christmas one in particular is actually on the Google Earth Education uh, website, which I'm quite, uh, quite happy about, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm going to just kind of jump out of the slide deck here. And I'm going to show you uh, one example. So this is, um, this is the tool. This is what it looks like when it's made and when it's, create, when it's been created. So you have different ways that you can, uh, you can create your, your Google Earth project. Um, now, once you, you launch it, okay, by that I mean making it public, uh, you can use the table of contents and go you know, wherever you want in the tour around the world using Google Earth's uh, technology and imagery. This, using the table of contents would be great if you've created a tour where you want students to work in groups. So maybe you have a group of five students. Um, I've got 10 different topics here. So maybe one student will do two of them, another student will do two, and they do a jigsaw and they, they go and do their own learning and then they come back and they teach each other. But if you're looking at uh, you know, a tour where the students are going through the whole tour on their own, whether you're using it for a class activity where you're taking them through or whether they're doing it on their own, you might wanna use this feature here, just use the little arrows at the bottom. Now, before we kind of go through and see what it looks like, I do want to point out that this is a full title slide, right? This is a full screen slide that I've decided. I like to have a nice, a nice landing page, uh, you know, when I have my tours. So it's got a background that kind of shows what we're going to be looking at. Uh, so it's this is obviously an artifact. Um, I like to put a little bit of text explaining what this tour is about, just to put it in context. And please note too, I've got my sources here. I've got my image source for this slide and I've got my work cited there. Um, and now this is for this particular one. Uh, I do put my citations in with each place that I go on a tour. Uh, we do want to be teaching our students uh, the, the thrill of academic honesty and that good feeling of giving credit where it's due, right? So after you get to the landing page, if somebody was going to go to the very first stop on our, on our tour, you just click the arrow and you're gonna wait and it's gonna take you around somewhere on the planet. In this case, we're looking at drugstores in the ancient Arab world. So in this case, um, uh, I believe this is in uh, Iraq. If I wanted to, I could you know, zoom in and kind of jump around. I mean, you can, you can you know, click on your mouse and, and have a look. You can, you can change the, the view as the viewer. You could make this uh, three dimensional if you wanted. Um, note here, I've got uh, links. So yes, you can create text. And you can put uh, um, uh, you can link text to external websites to extend their learning. Um, if I wanted to use Pegman, yes, this little this little you know human like looking thing here is called Pegman. If I wanted to drag that and drop it over, let's see. All right, let's see what's going on in Baghdad here. I'm going to drop that right in there, and this is going to take me as the viewer, and I'm going to zoom in. And then I can kind of look at what this place looks like in the modern world. Hey, that's kind of nice. Look at the pretty flowers and trees and that kind of thing. However, this is the modern day, which is kind of cool. We're talking about drugstores in the ancient Arab world, uh, in this case, Baghdad. Uh, and now we've got a little park. Hey, what does this place look like today? So then when I click on my arrow to go to the next place, it pulls me out. And then it's going to take me to another place. Um, yeah, kind of... Uh, <laughs> Bit of a, 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 a tough topic here, circumcision in the ancient world, but yes, people did do this. Um, and we got a little problem with this, the loading here. Let's go to the next one and see kind of what happens. All right, so now we're looking at brain surgery. And I wanna go here because I wanna point something out. Uh, yes, people did at least 4,000 years ago trepanate their skull, you know, oh, my head hurts. Well, let's cut your skull open and see what's in there. Um, yeah, people thought that, that's incredible, 4,000 years ago. Um, no anesthesia, remember. Um, note up here, I've got my image, okay? And of course, I've given my image source right here. If I click on the arrow that you see right there, that's taking me to a video. So you can actually embed YouTube videos in these Google Earth projects so that the learning is extended. This is another reason why I really love this, right? Um, you, can, you can add multimedia to this um, if you wanted to create, for example, a Google Form or a Kahoot, you could link that and, uh, and, and you know, use that as a class activity. In fact, I've got an example of just that Kahoot right here, um, the story of Valentine's Day. 
Now, you know, this is a linked uh, piece of text. And so there's a Kahoot that I've put together for this tour. And this is public on the web, by the way. So all you have to do is click on that and you can, uh, you can check it out. Now, the reason I pulled up the story of Valentine's Day is that I want to show you something that you can actually do as well uh, with this tour. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the table of contents and go down to this, um, uh, this uh, 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 it's a church, I think, not a cathedral, a church in uh, Santa Maria in Rome, Italy. If you click on this, watch what happens. Now you can see we're going to Rome. I've got my image at the top. I've got my text and all that, but, but watch what this does for us. This is going boom. It's taking me right down into that church. And so I, you know, the students can actually scroll around uh, because this church was actually mentioned when I was doing research, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, so I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna get them to look at the bird's eye view. I'm gonna get them to look right in the church. And of course, at the top here, I've got, you know, images linked. Uh, you know, these are some of the uh, the catacombs uh, underneath uh, the, the city uh, where things and events happened. Um, and again, I've got all my information and my details linked down below. So uh, just, you know, th it's pretty versatile. You'll notice here, too, that we've got the street view arrow. So if I tap on that, that's actually going to take me out onto the street. And I can scroll around here and see, hey, can I do a little bit of exploring? Can I go somewhere else? In this case, there's nowhere else I can go, but if you were in an open area, maybe like Pompeii or something, and you saw one of these uh, arrows right there, you could actually take that tour walking along Google Earth. Google Earth Projects is all connected to Street View and their 360 imagery, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. So um, one last little sample because, hey, Christmas is coming. I thought uh, I'd throw um, a little Christmas uh, festivity in here. This is actually on the Google Earth uh, education website, but uh, this is linked in the slide deck as well. Um, so let's quickly go to Rome, Italy. And this is an example of how you can use this again. So we're, we're going to the ancient origins of Christmas, Saturnalia, pagan holiday. Again, I can grab Pegman, and if I want to drop, uh, you know, Pegman, that's the name Google gives. Uh, you know, anywhere there's blue, there's a lot of blue going on there. Uh, then it's going to take you down to the street view, and you can scroll around a little bit. But again, you know, I've got my image there, and I've got my image cited, and I've got a link that might take students to a little bit further, uh, you know, further learning. Hey, and I picked a good one. It looks like this is uh, maybe Trajan's Market um, in Rome. Now, if I go to the next slide, and this is why I'm showing you this, if I go to the next slide, now I'm back to a full screen slide. So a Google Earth Projects can also be used kind of as a slideshow that students go through on their own. So they, they move from place to place. But if you want, you can throw a full screen slide in there with an image in the background uh, or a full screen slide just with a YouTube video, actually. Um, and you can put a little bit of text in here, uh, not for the YouTube video, but um, uh, for the full screen slide. and. Uh, and you can just give a little more context for what's coming next. So it really is a versatile tool. Let me just uh, have a look uh, here uh, at the comment box. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Mel, Mel mentioned a tough topic, yes. And I know you're talking about the circumcision in the ancient world, right? Yeah, definitely. And I see uh, Kai-san, yeah, I'm gonna make one in, uh, in Japan. I should do one for, yeah, like, you know, Obon, for example, or maybe the, the, the big festivals uh, in different parts of the country. So without further ado, what I would like to do is show you how to build this. And so I've copied this link into um, YouTube, but I'm gonna throw it in there for you again. So what you can do is access this Google, uh, this Google Doc, and I've already got the information that you need, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through how you can take this information and very quickly build you, your Google Earth tour. So I'm gonna pull that over there. Um, now, the purpose, uh, the one thing that I think is really important is that you do your research first. You notice here I've got my things written, I've got my image attribution, I've got my, uh, um, any kind of uh, citation that I might need. In this case, my citations are a little bit further to the bottom. Uh, make sure you're putting your citations in there, please, after you've done your, uh, your research. So, the first thing that you want to do, I'm going to just jump into the, GEG Nagoya account. And if you go to your apps launcher, there's different ways you can open Google Earth. You can go to your apps launcher and click Earth, and it's gonna take a little bit of time to load. So you can do that now. Um, something else you can do is also type earth.google.com. And if you tap on that, 
it's going to launch Google Earth as well. And it takes a moment for Google Earth to launch, actually. Now, when you get this, you're going to see this little blue button that says Launch Earth. So you can just click right there. And then it's going to open up the tools that you want to use. Now, one thing, what was I thinking here? I always uh, I talk a little too quickly sometimes, so I lose my chain of thought. Um, I want to go back to the to the slide deck just for a moment, just to share a couple of thoughts on storytelling. Uh, go ahead and get Google Earth launched so that you can see this interface right here. Okay, we're not going to go through all the tools, but the tool I do want you to use is on the left here. It looks like that little um, look like a little maps marker around uh, on top of a square. Click on that. That's your projects tool. So you want to tap there. I'll do that in just a moment. But I want to come back to the slide deck because I do feel there are some important things we got to talk about when we tell stories. Um, you know, whether it's face to face, online, uh, when we write them in books. So, what is this idea of digital storytelling? Basically, it is using computer based tools to, to, to get your message out. It could be memoirs, it could be student portfolios, it could be actual a, a story that a student made, uh, it could be a tour like we're making on Google Earth projects. Um, you want to, uh, when we're talking about digital storytelling, we're also including video and audio and images and that kind of thing. Now, Google Earth Projects at the moment doesn't have audio, but if you use Google Earth, click on that uh, uh, give feedback button. Google tools always have a give feedback button. Let them know, I'd like to see audio in Google Earth Projects, and maybe they'll do it. So anything we publish on the web that's using multimedia, that's telling a story. Now, when we do this with students, now I'm not going to read all of these because uh, that'll drive you nuts, but some important points that stand out for me. What, is, what do students um, you know, do with this stuff? What do they get out of it? You know, it gives them voice. It gives them agency. If they're collaborating, they can learn from each other. If they're making their own thing, they have an authentic audience, which I think is really important because that leads to independence. It leads to motivation. Um, it leads to a sense of accomplishment and pride and self-confidence and that kind of thing. And, and hey, the rest of the world can learn from students when they build these things as well, right? Um, they also develop skills. They learn to do research. They lead, uh, learn to do analysis. Uh, if you do require them, and you should, to cite all of their sources, their pictures, their videos, where they got their text, uh, then they're learning academic honesty and they're accountable for the research they do. And of course, they're getting those uh, you know, oral and written skills. They're learning creativity. They're using design. And if they're learning about some other place in the world or other people, they're developing empathy, aren't they? Whether it's a tour from the past or a tour in the present. So a few best practices and then we'll move on. So here's the thing. Sometimes we're doing topics that might be controversial, right? You want to make sure that you're being equitable and honest. So if you're, for example, doing a tour on archaeology, make sure you look at archaeological, uh, archaeological sites and important things in history uh, from around the world. You know, get every content in there. Show that this is the human experience. Keep that in mind. This is a human experience. We are just the same, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we love, the way we cry around the world. Uh, for example, conflict. Conflict's a tough topic. So, um, you know, you don't want to create a tour that kind of looks like uh, conflict in this part of the world or that part of the world. Choose topics where we can say, oh, that's a human condition. And let's look at a conflict in North America. Let's look at one in Southeast Asia. Let's look at one in Europe or Africa and that kind of thing. We want to avoid stereotypes. Uh, encourage your students to think of the audience, right? If you're creating a tour for a younger audience, you don't want a lot of text. If your tour is aimed at doing research and having your students do research from your tour, maybe you're going to have more text. Um, or if you're doing a jigsaw kind of thing. Do your research first. If you do your research first, get all your text written, your citations and that, it's going to be really, uh, it's going to be efficient when you go to make your project. And again, include your citations and your credits, right? We as educators have to model academic honesty. We expect that from our students. So we should expect that of ourselves. And be consistent when you create your tour, OK? So here's the hands-on stuff. Off we go. We are going to jump back into Google Earth. And so again, go to the projects icon. And you click on that. And you're going to click Create. Now, if you have one already created, 
then you can uh, you know click uh, on the down arrow and look in Google Drive. All your tours are saved in Google Drive, but I'm just gonna click Create Project in Google Drive. And this is what pops up. So what we wanna do is give a title to our project. So this is where creating uh, your text first is good. So I'm gonna take this World Heritage Sites and I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it into my project. I'm just gonna go Untitled Project and I'm gonna add my description. So I'm just gonna copy all of this. I go back to my site, uh, my, my Google Doc that is. Let me click the edit button. You always have that little edit pen. And now the thing is, this is not what people see. This is for the collaborators to look at. This is for just the collaborators building the project. It's when you add a feature that uh, you know people will see things. So you don't really have to put a lot in there. That's just for your own uh, filing and management kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is go back to my uh, um, my uh, my text, right? So I've done all my research here. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to go right back to my project. And it's this blue button right here where it says New Feature, right? I'm going to click on New Feature, and I'm going to click on um, Full Screen Slide. Now, you could start with, bang, here's a place in the world. I like to start with a full screen slide because I want to give context. Now. When you get a place, you're gonna get all of this. And if uh, you're using an account for the first time, you're gonna get all those reminders from Earth as well. So I'm gonna put in my title. All right, World Heritage Sites. I'm gonna go back to my text. I'm gonna copy my description, including my image attribution, because I'm gonna put an image in there. So I'm gonna put that in there. Let me undo that. I'm gonna edit and paste to match style. Okay, so for some reason I had some black text in there. Uh, I'm going to go back. I want to make sure I have a link in here. You don't really have to do that, but I'm going to go to my link here. And you can see I'm going to click the copy link button. And I know I'm going a little quickly here, but I want to uh, I want to keep the time here. So here's the name of the source. In fact, I might just link the whole thing, the image attribution. So I'm going to paste a URL in there because you see I've clicked on my little link button, just like any other Google tool. And I'm gonna click OK. And now I know that that is linked. But I also want to use the image. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna copy the thumbnail address again. In fact, I didn't quite have to do that. And in here, I could put a background color in, but if I click background color and preview my presentation, you can see the preview there, right? If I click on that, it's, you know, it's good, it, it looks neat, it looks organized, but it's just a little bit too blah for me. I wanna put an image in there. So what I'm gonna do is click on my camera icon right here. And I'm gonna tap on that. And you can do a Google search, you can, you know, look for YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff if you want. You can take an image from Google Drive. I've got a URL from a, from a Google search that I did. So note here, it's got JPEG at the end. So I'm just gonna put that in there. I'm gonna wait for it to load. And this Moai from Easter Island that looks really cool. So I'm going to hit select. I'm going to wait for that to appear. And if I don't like it, I can change the image or I can click the trash can. Well, let's hit presentation and see how the text looks with the image. Wait a moment for it to load. Uh, so that's not too bad, you know. Um, the image is a little bit grainy, so I might want to change that and get a, a better image, maybe one that's slightly darker. But you can actually read the text, and I see my link works. So I'm thinking, that's not bad. I, I, I might keep that, maybe put a different image in there. So what we want to do next is add a place. So what we got to do is go right up here to that arrow and click the back arrow, and then we're back here. And you can see now that I've got a full title slide and this is where I can either edit it or I can trash it. So you can go back and you can edit things if you want. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my text. And the first thing that I wanna do is go to Great Zimbabwe. I know where it is on earth, so I'm, I'm using the location, right? So you wanna use the location. So I'm not gonna type the title of the, uh, of the actual place that I want people to see in the knowledge card. That's the text on the right side. I want to choose the place name. You could do Zimbabwe, but I want the site called Great Zimbabwe. So I'm gonna take that out, I copy that. I'm gonna click New Feature. Now this next step is kind of important in terms of being efficient. So I click New Feature, and I'm gonna click Search to Add Place. Now if I know exactly on a map 
if I was to turn this into a map here, like the map feature, I could actually add a place marker right where I want it to go, uh, if you know the place. That would be good if you're doing um, uh, a tour of your local community and you know where everything is by looking down from the bird's eye view. But uh, I'm going to search for a place because I can't exactly pinpoint Great Zimbabwe. So I got my search box, and I'm just going to paste in my place name. And here it, here it is, right? This is what I want. I don't want Zimbabwe Fort Hill. I want the monument in Zimbabwe. Now, remember, if you place... If you're using a place name that has different places around the world, like London, England, or London, Ontario, Canada, and I'm sure there are many other Londons around the world, you want to make sure you get the right one, okay? So this I know is the one that I want. I click on that. And what it's doing now is adding this place to my tour. And so I'm going to look at the comments there. Okay. So now I've got my places. I'm going to tap on that. And now I get this pop-up that says add to project. So it gives me a little preview. That's a, a new feature actually in Earth. It shows you, okay, is this the place that you really want? Um, this is what I want and I'm going to click add to project. But I'm not going to get too excited and go straight ahead. I'm going to click add to project and then I get this. Now I want to put my title. I'm not going to just quickly click save because I want to edit this place. I want it to take me back in here and edit. So I'm going back to the title. And the title that I want for this place is Great Zimbabwe. Uh, hopefully you've got your screen split so you can kind of follow along as we're doing this. I realize this is a, a little bit fast paced, but you can go back and have a look. If we were in a face-to-face -face workshop, uh, I'd be uh, taking a little bit uh, more time here. So I've got my, uh, my title here. It's got the place in my project. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to click Edit Place. Wonderful. Now it's taking me back into where I can edit. One more step is you've got to click Replace right here. I don't want the text that is on Wikipedia, which is connected to Google Earth. Like, no offense to Wikipedia. You know, a lot of nice people there. Uh, and it does have its place in the world, but uh, not, not for my project. So I'm going to click Replace. And so now I get the same thing here. I've got my title in here. So now I'm going to start building the content for this place. So I'm going back to my Google Doc. And I'm going to get my text. And I'm going to grab all of it right here. I'm going to copy. And then I'm going to just paste it right in there. And that did the same thing. I don't know why it's automatically going to black there. Uh, so I'm going to go to edit, paste, and match style, and now it's white. I've never had that happen before. I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, so now what I want to do is get all my linking here in the text. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to grab my image attribution. It's, uh, uh, it's from Wikimedia, right, which is a Creative Commons uh, thing, which is always good. And so the description is uh, under Creative Commons license, and the image is there. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to put my link. The link from my last place always stays, so i got to highlight and delete that and then put a new, uh, a new URL there. So I'm going to click OK, and now that's going to be in there. Now I've got my YouTube video here, so I'm going to go back, and I'm going to copy that. And I don't necessarily have to do this, but um, I want people to, uh, to be able to click the link. and view, Well, they can view it outside, but I also want them to see uh, you know, kind of where this came uh, from. Also, you're going to have your info box. Now, on the, on the right side, you saw that box pop up. Uh, in some Google tools, it's called a knowledge card. In other places, in this case, it's an info box. So I'm going to choose the large one. Uh, I like the large info box because it takes the whole side of the, uh, of the screen. You'll see what I mean as I preview my presentation. Oh, actually, I don't want to do that yet. I want to put my image in here. So I'm going to kind of go back to my text. I'm going to click my image attribution link. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back in. And again, I'm going to hit that camera button. Now remember, again, you can you know, use Google Drive photos you have. You can do an image search in Google, right? Click image search, and you type uh, you know, the name of the place that you want. Um, actually, if uh, let's just do that. Zimbabwe, Great Zimbabwe. And yeah, maybe this is the image that I want to use. Um, I could actually put that in. Um, I've got one that I actually chose, so I'm going to put that URL because uh, I want that bird's eye view. So I'm going to go with this image, actually. I think that's kind of cool. So I'm going to wait for it to load, 
Now, because it's not a full title slide, I can actually add other images. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna do my image search. I'm gonna put Great Zimbabwe again. And I'm gonna go and take this one right here. I like that close up. So I'm gonna throw that one in. So now I've got a couple of images and you can go and put like a couple of dozen images in if you want. Now, the thing is, I also wanna put a video in here, right? So let's actually preview the presentation, kind of see how it looks right now. You can always preview a little bit before you make it public. I'll wait for that to load. Okay, so now I've got my image slide deck that gives more context to the place. Remember, you can drag Pegman and drop in wherever there might be any blue. There's only a little bit of blue in there. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now. I'll show you what you can do that's really cool with that later. All right, so my links work. I've got YouTube there, but I, I don't want to keep just YouTube here. I want my YouTube to appear up there. So I'm going to go to the top left again. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to go back to my text, and I'm going to take this YouTube link, and I'm going to copy that, go back to my project, and I'm going to edit the place again. We're looking at this Bantu civilization. And here, I'm going to click on my camera again. This time I'm gonna choose YouTube. And I'm gonna just, I could do a search if I want, but I know the video I want. Sometimes uh, the search in images in YouTube in other Google apps don't give you as much uh, when you're, you're doing a search. So I usually do my search and then copy the link from directly from YouTube. So I'm gonna click sele um, select who built Great Zimbabwe. So there's a video now. If I click my presentation uh, to the preview, I've got my image. I've got my image and whoa, hey, what a surprise. Now I can click on that and my students can actually watch this YouTube video. They click play. I'm not gonna do that for you right now, but now I've got a YouTube video that I've checked out uh, from TED-Ed, really cool organization. Uh, and it just adds more multimedia and, and a richer experience for the user. So let me go back here. So. Now, another thing that I wanna show you that you can do, and I think I'll use Great Zimbabwe as the example. Now, if I was to preview this whole presentation, right? I'm gonna go back to my title slide here. I'm gonna build another quick little thing here. Now, I don't wanna preview this. I'm gonna close that, sorry. I want to present. So I've got my title slide in here. I only have one place, so I'm just gonna click the arrow. And so you'll notice that this takes me straight to the bird's eye view but maybe I want my students to be a little more engaged and captured. So I want them to go straight down into Great Zimbabwe. So I'm gonna go back and do a little bit of editing here. So I'm gonna go back to my place and I'm gonna click on the, um, the, the, the pencil so I can edit. And what I'm gonna do is go over here, all right? I'm in the, the bottom right here. And I wanna see, now if I, if I click and drag Pegman and drop it in here, if there's blue, then that means Google Street View has 360 degree imagery in there. So let's click and drag and see what happens. And I do see a little bit of blue in there. If, if you're not sure, you know, one thing that you can do is just zoom in a little bit. Now, if I want to, I can click capture this view. Uh, that's another important point, which I'm about to show you in a moment. If, if I feel that this is a little bit too far out, I can zoom in a little bit and then I can click capture this view and that's the view that the students or the viewer or the user is gonna get. But I wanna show you something way cool. I'm gonna click and drag Pegman, and there's my blue. It's a little bit easier to see. Let's see, yep, I'm gonna drop Pegman right there into the blue. And so now it's gonna take me down into the street view. Oh, isn't that cool? Let's wait for that to load. Now I'm gonna scroll around a little bit and I'm gonna to try to find what I think is probably the most engaging view in this 360 image. Let's see. Oh, that's kind of cool, that hut there. But maybe that'll be a nice surprise when my students kind of look around, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna use that. And down here below, I'm gonna choose capture this view. So I click capture this view. And now what's gonna happen is when the students view this, they're automatically gonna be pulled down in here. So I'm gonna go back, this auto saves by the way, and it saves it to Google Drive. So I'm gonna click present. I'm actually gonna put right here. Whoops, gonna close that. I'm gonna click present. And I'm gonna click. And this, because I've already loaded it, automatically takes me in here. But if you go from one place to another, 
uh, it's automatically going to take you right down to the street view. So bear with me for just a moment. I'm going to do a real quick crash course just to show you how fast you can make your tour. And remember, you can link like Kahoot and Mentimeter quizzes. Um, you can use the HTML feature as well. That's a bit advanced, so I'm not going to do that. But very quickly, watch how fast, now that I have my research done, it takes me how fast I can create a place. Petra Jordan's where I want to go. So I'm going to go to new feature. I'm going to click search for a place to add. I'm going to go up here at the top. I'm going to delete the last bit. I'm going to enter it. Whoops. All right, Petra, this is where I want to go. I'm going to click add to project. I'm going to go back. I'm going to get the actual title that I want to use for my project. I'm going to click that, copy that. I'm going to paste it in there. And I'm going to click edit place. So I click edit place. And it's going to bring me back. And remember, now I want to click that replace button. So I click that. Now I'm going to go back and grab my text. I'm going to grab all of it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in there. Now I'm going to add my links. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to do two things right now, actually. First, I'm going to put my image in there by URL, because I know the image. You can do an image search if you want. And while that image is loading, I'm actually going to load my link to the image where I've got my image attribution. And I'm going to link YouTube as well. So I go back to my doc. I click YouTube. Uh, I'm going to copy my link. Go back to Earth. I'm going to highlight my YouTube text. Now, you don't always have to do this, remember, because uh, YouTube is automatically, you know, it automatically pops up here. So you're not really breaking academic honesty laws, rules, uh, norms. So I paste in uh, YouTube. I do my search. There's the one I want, Stunning Stone Monuments of Petra. That's a good National Geographic video. I think I want to make something a little bit more engaging here. I'm going to grab Pegman again. And let's see. I think maybe... We might be in here. Let's uh, let's actually just put it right in there. That's going to drag me down. So I go look at the street view. And let's scroll around. Oh yeah, that's what I want them to see. I think that's pretty cool, right? So let's go with let's go with that. They know they're in the right place. So I'm going to click capture this view again. All right. So now, if I want, I can do other things. Uh, with Google Earth, you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can add polygons and things like that. Uh, we're not going to get into that. That's um, not difficult. Uh, you know, one of the more advanced features. But I think for what most teachers would do, uh, we've kind of gone through. So I want to click Present. And so now I've got my three places here, right? So let's just go to the first one, see what happens. So we go from Petra. That's the place that we were just at. So zoom, it's going to take me to Great Zimbabwe. And you see it takes me down to the street view. And now my students can kind of scroll around and look at stuff. Oh, that looks kind of neat. Oh, hey, there's a hut. I wonder what's in there. Build my curiosity. I've got my images on this, uh, my text on the side of my images. And I can kind of scroll through here. And I've got that YouTube video. Let's go to the next place. So now it pulls me out, and I'm going to be able to kind of get that bird's eye view as we fly over to another part of the world, Petra in Jordan, and it takes me straight down. Ah, and now I noticed in my thing is I didn't change my info. This is an info card that's small. I don't really like that. I'm going to go back and edit that a little bit later. But at least now my students can look around, and, uh, and, and they can engage with the content. And I've got my links that work, and I've got that video in there. But you know what? I'm a little anal retentive, so I am going to go back. And I'm going to edit Petra. So I click on my little edit thing. And I'm going to change my info card. As I scroll down here, see it says small info box. I'm going to change that to large info box because I prefer that. Now, I'm going to click my back arrow here. And lastly, you want to know how to collaborate, how to share with the world. So like any other Google tool, right up here where you have the share icon, you click share project. And who can see it? Well, right now it's got GEG Nagoya. I'm going to click continue. And so now I want to change this to 
anyone with the link. So, you know, I copy the link, I click done. If I go to another URL or another place, I just have to paste that link in there. And we wait for Google Earth to load. And this is the link that you would share with people. It does take a moment for it to load, so just bear with me for a moment because we're gonna, well, we, we see exactly what it looks like on Google Earth, which we did a moment ago, I know. So here I would click present. Now, if this is what people see, then they would get present. But what you can do is open up the tour like this and then the link that you have at the top, that's the one you can share with people that'll take them here. Now, if we go back to Google Earth and click on that share icon again, here is at the top where you can add collaborators. So if I wanted to add myself, I can add myself as an editor or just a viewer if I want to get feedback uh, from other people. Look at it. Don't change it. Just give me feedback. I click send, and then I'm going to be able to collaborate with myself. In fact, I do this. If I make something uh, uh, you know, in my school account, I share it with my private account so I can just uh, kind of work on it when I don't have my school account open. Uh, and I can make copies of it for myself and that kind of thing. If I don't like the project, I can trash it. Um, these all go to Google Drive, though. So why don't we quickly see what that looks like? I'm going to go click Drive. And when you first use Google Earth Projects, it actually saves your project in Google Drive for you. It automatically creates a folder called Google Earth. And so you can see here now I've got this blue folder that I did not have before called Google Earth. If I tap on that, here is my project, so I can open it up from Google Earth if I want. And like any other tool, you also have the thumbnail. Essentially, that is Google Earth projects. It's a really simple tool to use. I know that was a little bit fast. I do have a tutorial online. Let me just go to socialstudiesamurai.com real quick. Probably should have had this uh, set up. I can. Uh, I click on tech in class. In fact, you know what? Maybe I'll just throw this uh, in the YouTube stream for those who might be watching now or later. Uh, if I go to tech in class, Google Earth stories, you will find right up here at the top a, uh, a tool, uh, sorry, a YouTube video. If you click on that, and this is going to automatically play, so maybe I'll pause that. You will find a short tutorial where 1,500 other people kind of viewed. Uh, of course, this serves as a tutorial. Whoa. Samurai. In this video, we're gonna show you how to tell your awesome story. Well, that wasn't the plan. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, so let me just throw that in the chat, in the comment box. Uh, that's a tutorial video that you can use that uh, goes through a few other features that you may, not, uh, may or may not use. Um, there are a number of other Google Earth features, but the point of this is storytelling. So I'm just very quickly going to uh, mention on the side, have a look at some of those other tools. Uh, I want to keep this to the 45 minute limit that we've been talking, um, but play around with Google Earth. If you go to this slide, you'll also notice Google My Maps. Um, uh, I've got another slide deck that's got Earth and uh, My Maps and a few other tools that you can kind of play with. Uh, in 2021, Google Expeditions and VR Tour Creator is being deprecated, but they are going to have a VR presence in Google Arts and Culture. So have a look for that in the future. I do encourage you to look at the other geo tools, but the point of this session was to focus on Google Earth projects. I hope you have a good time. Uh, I do want to remind you, get in touch with me at Nathan Gildart on Twitter or socialstudiesamurai.com are the easiest places to find me. Uh, so. Uh, let me know what you think about Google Earth projects at any point in time. Thanks a lot for tuning in. For the next two days, you've got like dozens and dozens and dozens, well over 100 presentations for GEG uh, APAC uh, weekend. In fact, I'll put like a little uh, stream there at the bottom. You can find us on our website, by the way, sites.google.com slash view slash GEG Asia. Um, go to that website, have a look at the schedules. There are loads of good things going on in multiple languages around Asia Pacific.